Welcome back to another Linux Gamecast Weekly, the show that covers the latest Linux gaming news, reviews, how tos and most importantly, whatever the hell else we come up with this week. Um, Tomb Raider, it's coming to Linux. I'm very excited about that. And you know what? It's about expletive deleted time, Feral, but hey, good on you. You're getting it out. And System Shock, well, the team has some bad news. Whatever could it possibly be? A new steam machine joins the fray. The, the <laughs> new steam machine joins the fray. Well, not really. And could this be the end of virtual programming? Well, not really. Steam shows some improvements. Not really a hard thing to do when you're dealing with that mess. And Shroud of the Avatar is coming out of early access. We shall see how Richard Garriott deals with that particular brand of failure. Mm, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I'm Vin Stone here at LGC Actual, ha- enjoying a delightful cup of Arch User Tears, as always, joined every week by our Toronto Bureau Chief, uh, Master Swing, enjoying a cup of the fuck you Star drink? Wars, the mm. quest for more money. Uh, it's brilliant. And all the way from the island in Space Britannia, Hello. Pedro Mateus. Joined every week live by the beautiful party people in Shot Realm Dynamic, helping us form the last special super awesome bit known as Cocaine Voltron. Before we get started, we do like to see what's going on in each other's life organs. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, I just want to say, I'm not saying this to be like, oh, look, I hate Windows because I hate, I've hated Windows for over two decades. But I do have a Windows device. We were talking about this in the pre-pre-super shows and Patreons. Go back and check that out. Um, I ordered a new Vapatron like in October, pre-ordered it, and it showed up. And I wanted to update the firmware. Jordan and I, uh, we were talking, you know, there's that one Windows type device that you might know someone. Or when you have that issue, I tried doing the firmware update and why it wouldn't work. But we do have a Windows 10 tablet. And F me, man. F me. After the updates and the reboots and just trying to get it to start. I rage quit. I rage quit Windows 10. That's it. Boom. <laughs> I, I I assume it's off. I put it back in its box because I couldn't get it to shut down. And I, See, I would, I would assume it's like what? I would have assumed it's like wedged in like a piece of drywall somewhere. That That's why I put it. it in the box, man. <laughs> it, if you were in Discord, you saw it. I was at the point of having a hub plugged into it with the dribble and the keep truck. <laughs> All right. Uh, what, what, what's been up with you, sweetheart? Oh man, uh, I it was it was it was an interesting week at work uh, this week. Was a bunch of people got fired. Apparently, I'm safe for now. But <laughs> Ooh. good times. Speaking of getting fired, yeah. not happening anytime soon, or at least I hope not. That's what you think. I bought. Fired. <laughs> <laughs> I bought new headset thingy. It doesn't blink anymore. So yeah. It's got that going for it. I also got a stand. It's a really cheap old stand. It was the cheapest one I could find. It said it was aluminum, but that's a lie. Like, this top bit here is rubber. The bottom bit here is just plastic. And the only bit that's actually aluminum is the uh, the actual pole. That's so racist, that's, man. Yeah. Yeah. Man, seriously, I, 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 on, on, on behalf of all poles, I'm seriously offended by that. <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Aluminum poles, yes. And speaking on behalf of the uh, Plastic Council, um, I would like to file a... No, um, a grievance. A grievance, man. Much like the horse. Oh, man. The, 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 the horse is grieving because we keep beating it with sticks day in, day out, and then we trot it out once a week for this segment. It's the Steamonix! Update of the week! So, yeah, it's time to... Uh, it's time to put some wishes on the wish list uh, if you have some games that you want, but uh, let's say they're still in early access and you don't really want them clotting up, clogging? Clotting. Clogging. Clotting. Yes. <laughs> you One clod. of those. Uh, <laughs> you don't want them clogging up your uh, Steam wish list, so maybe you want to hide them. Well, now you can. Uh, with the new and improved Steam Store wish list, according to Valve, uh, you can set certain filters in the wish list, like, say, if you added an early access game to the wish list, but you don't really want to see it until it's out, you can hide it, and when it does come out, and if you have it on your wish list, you will get an email from Valve saying, oh, look, this game is now out of early access. 
go and buy the, the, it, it and it will show up this, on this your is, list. This is also good for cheap gamers too, because you can set up filters yes. for games that are like less than five dollars, less than ten dollars, less than the amount of money you currently have in Steam if you're super <laughs> fucking broke, or or if it's uh, twenty five, uh, fifty, or seventy five or more percent off, which means that you will get alerted if you're going to be a patient gamer. And try but this money. is Valve we're talking about. Uh, so in doing this update to introduce more functionality, they removed old functionality without meaning to. Uh, there used to be a thing you could do in your wish list, which was reorder uh, whatever games you had on there to like the one you really want at the top, the one you kind of want but don't really care at the bottom. All that, well, you can't do that right now. They bored well, it. it I mean, it doesn't matter because all I have on my wish list is Lee Carvalho's putting challenge. This so. is true, man. Uh, Renee put a thing in our show notes because you can definitely do that. And that's a fair question. Where did the uh, uh, only wanted if it's on Linux option thing? Is that still a thing? Uh, that's still a thing, but it's automatic. Like uh, if you're running the Linux client and you add something to the wish list, it'll show up on the developer's uh, like uh, back end. Uh, that they'll see Dude. that X amount of Linux people want this game. It's on their wish list. So basically, if you're running the Linux client, just wish list all the games that you want, and it'll tell the developers if they care, which they don't. Right yeah. on. Uh, an MSI Polar Vortex. It's the yeah. You gotta you gotta welcome to machine to complete the Pink Floyd reference trifecta, or at least start it anyways. So. There is a quote unquote steam machine that was recently released by um, the ma manufacturer of many of the components in all three of our systems, MSI. Um, and uh, oh, look, it, it, is, it comes it, with a handy picture of how to steal it from the. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> oh, no, no, because it's not it's not actually stuffed under your shirt or anything. Hmm. Uh, but this is the uh, MSI Vortex G25 exclusively for G's. It has a Core i7 8700 processor. 16 gigs of RAM, a 1070 uh, SSD, and a one terabyte drive, and uh, an Athros Killer Nick, which uh, I don't. Know. It has a nice little form factor too. And but here's the here's the thing about that though, is this is this is what was always sort of the problem with the Steam Machine proposition as as presented. It has decent specs. It has a great form factor because it'll just like it has it has base amounts. You can slap it on the back of your TV. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it's thin. It's out of the way. It looks like any other sort of home theater appliance you might have but it's also fucking two grand mm -hmm. and it's it's cheaper to just build the equivalent system plus you can get a ryzen and don't have to deal with shitty intel bullshit but anyways yep. the, uh, the other the, the other thing that's kind of the sore point here is the fucker is running windows okay they don't actually now, this is one of my like my legit question is didn't valve have a policy back when or something that maybe they've just forgotten about that it has to be running steam OS in order to be called a steam machine oh 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 oh, oh sweetie sweetie Valve don't give a flying fuck about steam machines anymore <laughs> you can you, you yeah listen, i you think can, that's the big listen, problem you, here no, they really can, don't you could get a popsicle a popsicle slap a steam machine <laughs> logo on it and they'd be cool with it mm. <laughs> Yeah, and it's not even two thousand dollars. It's three thousand Aussie dollars. It's no, that's way too much. Just no, that's uh, like when the steam machines, actual steam machines, came out, quote unquote. Uh, you had the one that was the Alienware one, which had an agreeable price point. It had a very teeny tiny, very nice form factor, and that sort of kind of worked, but. What? I don't know. 3,000 Australian dollars. That's way too much. Mm. No. Yeah. So, so, so I, I assume it's going to be in Foxy's uh, Amazon shopping cart in about three. <laughs> not excited. I mean, it's, it's a decent piece of kit, stupidly priced. And um, yeah, it's running a horrible, horrible operating system. Up next. Up next. Yeah. So. Listen, when I put out a product, instead of like engaging with communities or trying to make the product good or I don't know, some some of the things that would probably make it sell money, uh, you could you could be like the fine fine folks at Incel Games. And also, guys, you 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 picked a name you you picked your name after like freaking fortune, like virgins, come on, dude. That that's that, that doesn't bode well for you. But anyways, um yeah, so 
the their CEO was saying, "Hey man, we're not getting promoted on Steam, man. You need to you need to buy a copy of our game that we made and make a review and we'll reimburse you, but uh th- this um this didn't really work out too well. This is for I believe Wild Buster was the name of the game. Um and uh as, as such Steam got wind of it and seems like, yeah, no, you're not going to game our system. And they uh, they kind of uh, gave these guys the boot. So oh, yes. that's the thing. Sketchy, sketchy shovel or devs going to going to sketch. Mm-hmm. But that, that and that's that's basically it. There, there There's a bit of a little kerfuffle on Reddit about this. Everyone's like, ah, let's get on the hate bandwagon. But it is, it is actually a shitty thing to do. Well, I mean, you they really should, do got to throw in the hate bandwagon because when it's Steam, they do not act until pitchforks are out and sharpened. Mm-hmm. They would have been more than happy to just let this slide and pretend it wasn't a thing as long as they were collecting their 40% off the sales. So. Mm-hmm. And the thing with this one was uh, the CEO left a an email for employees saying, look, our reviews, we're not getting a whole lot of reviews, and basically all our jobs depend on this game, so you guys got to do something about it. And then he put out an official announcement saying, I didn't mean for people to actually go out and buy the game and leave um, biased reviews and reviews that were clearly uh, from the developer. Uh, I just meant that we needed more engagement. We needed more community, uh, the community around the game to actually say what they feel about the game so we could get more reviews and we could get more things and thus raise our... uh, Steam, whatever. And, well, that didn't really work out that way. No one really believes him at this point, so it's it's gone to shit. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah, and the, they're, they're off Steam now. Good riddance. Mm-hmm. Let's, yeah. let's, play, let's, let's play some power chords. Indeed. So, uh, there was a big-ish uh, beta client update on February 13th. Uh, no Linux specific fixes, but there was a lot in the Steam input a fixes. A lot of input. Uh, yeah. There was the yeah the uh, corded uh, press activator, which um, it requires another input to be active for it to fire. It uh, it's it's an activator the same way that Valve have already been doing activators. You hold down a certain key and you press another key and it does a different thing. It allows you to map more keys to the Steam controller to. Um, Basically, do more things, which is good. Uh, more functionality is always good. They also added the ability to uniquify configurations across Xbox and generic controllers. While the actual hardware cannot be differentiated, uh, they treat them as unique controllers based on the connection order. And to that I say, wow, took hmm. you long enough. That, that's that been a while. <laughs> but yeah, this means that uh, if you have friends over and you, for some reason, set up your own Steam machine, now you, they can just bring their own controllers, plug them in, boom, done. It'll work. Uh, they also um, let you have, if, say, you're like Jordan and you have a DualShock 4 controller and you're trying to stream to your Steam Link or whatever a non-Steam game, well, uh, it used to be that you couldn't really do it unless you set that DualShock 4 to emulate the Steam controller or the um, Xbox 360 controller. Well, now you can. And it uh, if the game supports the correct button prompts, it won't remap them. Uh, it won't show them on screen like it was an Xbox or a Steam controller. It'll actually give you the DualShock prompts as it should. So good on them. Personally, personally I'm very pleased about that. I also hope... And I'll talk about this a little bit in the review segment when we get there. But there's some issues when you have a DualShock controller paired as a Steam controller where things don't necessarily work some of the time. So hopefully mm-hmm. that is being addressed uh, in, in this update, or at least is coming down the pipe. No, it's definitely a good thing. I, I Yeah, I agree with you 100%. It's time that they fix that because just, just having two controllers is you, you just dancing with sketchiness right there and um, yeah it'd be nice to have a little more confidence especially when we have actual several games like gang beast and um mm-hmm. the likes that you know four plus players ta- 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 tower fall yeah yeah that ta- 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 tower well, fall couch yeah. multiplayer <laughs> it's definitely yeah. a thing so a lot of people for some reason thought valve could 
fucking count three. They can't. Get over it. It's not going to happen. <laughs> Left for Dead 3 teaser posted by Valve. Dev D. Bonked um, by Rory Young. He kind of rocks through this. All this business again going to be in our show notes. It's kind of showed up on their Facebook page. And uh, I don't even know if it was an official page, but holy fuck, did Reddit explode? And they're like, oh my God, this is going to be a thing. And everyone was joking, saying, oh, can't wait for the Left for Dead card game, which you can rightfully might as well say that. Uh, <laughs> turns out th- there's nothing. I mean, well, why Why would you even get your hopes up for this, man? Uh, it's Listen, just a it's straight a, up rumor. I mean, it was a it's Facebook. A great time to, it, it's a great time to invest in the straws because people are just grasping from like <laughs> nobody's business. Um, I, I, I mean, and it, it boils down to, this, was, this wasn't actually an official Facebook page. Uh, they dissected it. Like the profile didn't use a Valve email address. It was set to female. It didn't really match up with the reality of the situation. So again, moral of the story. Don't believe anything you hear or see on the internet, especially us. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The only reason that this one uh, got any attention at all is that they managed to snipe the uh, Left for Dead website blog thingy that Valve does for each of their games. They snipe that URL and set a redirect to this particular uh, Facebook profile. That's what got people thinking. Maybe it's an actual thing. Maybe they were playing some sort of weird game. But no. Yeah, like mm-hmm. Jordan said, it's already been debunked. Uh, so, yeah, no no counting to three just yet. No counting to three, and whoever's behind that or was behind it, dick, dick, move. And <laughs> also, it's Valve. Valve doesn't announce shit, so that should always nope. be clue number one. Armadillos, man, tell me about them. Uh, well, they like to roll up in little balls, and that one time they were the name of the Ubuntu version no, no, this, this is Armello. It's a board game that I believe it's either Sildat or Fox Dog gave me a copy of all the DLC. I have yet Sildat, to play with them. I think, yeah. <laughs> yeah. What, 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 one of the two people who will just buy games that they want us to play with them. <laughs> uh, but, but anyways, um, there, was a, there, was a, there was an update uh, pushed out recently for Armello. And apparently people couldn't really log in after the fact. Uh, there were um, There were a lot of people freaking out. And so doing the responsible thing, these guys rolled back. Uh, the version to I believe it's one nine two, and I gotta I gotta say good on them for this because having having been in that situation where like you deploy something to prod and it completely fucks up regardless of like how much yep. QA you did it that it it happens something something <laughs> inevitably goes wrong and you hit it's like two o'clock in the morning you hit that oh shit moment and you start rolling shit back and praying that it'll go back to the <laughs> original state so i'm happy i am happy that they disclosed what happened and it it, it shows that they actually care about their their uh, user base because it's like hey we fucked up here here here's what fucked up here's why it fucked up and here's why we had to roll things back so good on them for that you can keep playing your arbello uh, settlers of Catan, like whatever, whatever, whatever the hell it is. Um, now uh, they're 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 gonna they're gonna push out the latest update. They're heading towards two uh, mm-hmm. soon, but things are very unstable. So yeah. right on, right on. Uh, coming up next is a little bit of an update for everyone's favorite murder simulator. Oh yeah, uh, they got they got a new uh, release out um, or a new beta release out. Anyways. It is, um, they're at, they added the multiplayer level editor uh, with some neat little primitive shapes. They added a bunch of bug fixes as well. So may, maybe we'll take a look at that a little later. And they have a brand new experimental branch out that has some neat quality of life things like multi-block mm-hmm. manipulation, rotation, copy pasta, um, which again, would that's make, really uh, helpful. You to make, mm-hmm. Yeah, it enables you to make more <laughs> fucked up death machines. That you can and use basically to your friends. Yeah, if you set like half uh, one half of the blocks to mirror the other, you can actually just build half of uh, your murder death machine, and the other half will build itself. So that is really awesome. That is something that uh, I uh, wish more uh, games would had. No man, would that's yeah, that is just going to lead to murder, murder cube five <laughs> Also true, but <laughs> it's definitely going to lead to more laziness because you're like, I'm going to build the other half. I'm just going to fuck around and then it's going to take two steps, scream, kill me and fall apart and catch on fire as we've learned. 
America. And, and inexplicably, you'll still win the round. It's a great game. Um, any chance of a Linux port? Oh, uh, yes. It came a bit late. A little bit. Uh, the game itself has been out since March 4th, 2016. But the Linux port finally finally came out uh it came out on february 9th if i'm not mistaken and the developers were like yeah no uh sorry it took so long but uh here it is momodora is now available for linux and i actually uh, remember uh, seeing uh, this game i i, I just like Go this ahead. gif if you scroll down of like the boss <laughs> fight where you're attacking this person's boobs that's all that's all i have mm -hmm. to add <laughs> Jordan's that's what saying, I remember about yeah, that game that particular game there, yeah. <laughs> uh, and yeah uh, it looks very Castlevania-y uh, and if the gameplay matches up I will probably be very much into that and since they now have a Linux port I think I'm uh, gonna shoot them an email see if they want to send us some chair QAzition keys that'd be nice could be fun and it's always good to see. I'm guessing is this a unity title and they just found I have it? no idea huh <laughs> Oh, no. Uh, I know. I, I I don't know. Appar apparently, you only need one gigabyte for graphics. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's talk about something uh, real quick. Uh, we just wanted to celebrate the anniversary uh, because in February of February fourteenth in twenty sixteen, mm -hmm. Steamos uh, status update: uh, Street Fighter Five players. Our development team is working closely with Valve engineers to bring a full Street Fighter V experience. Oh, Steam that's Oz. why. Uh, okay. Yeah, it's going to be a free update, and yeah, we just a uh, two-year anniversary of that. And eat a bag of dicks. Where's it at? Uh, I think the last <laughs> excuse was like, "But we're going to be using Vulcan. That's what's taking so long." And you could he actually hear Crow Team laughing. And. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All, all, all the way from Croatia. Yeah, I mean, for, for, you, for you folks who are holding your breath, um, you're probably dead by now because I don't think you can go two years without air. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, no, I mean, I mean, like we, we've gotten zero radio. We've got nothing but Radio Silence since then. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, fuck. And if and you want a TLDR of the comments section on this post, it's basically broken promises. Fuck off. For yeah, 15 yeah. War, pages war, of war, comments. War, 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 yeah, war, 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 all I had to say was I was like hashtag member. And um, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Pedro, you have a raging clue about this next story. Yes, I do. Uh, mostly because I'm a filthy heathen and I pre ordered uh, Never Winter Nights and Hass Edition. If you could even pre order a game that technically came out in 2002. But whatever. Uh, version 8159 is now out on Steam, and the Steam beta begins. Now, you can't actually pre-order it on Steam. You'll have to go to Beamdog, pre-order it there, and they'll give you a Steam key for it. But earlier in the week, uh, they did a little beta just to see how it was working before they actually sent out all the retail keys to the um, the people who already pre-ordered it. And they gave out, uh, if I'm not mistaken, around 400 keys for it. And they said originally that those keys were going to be for the beta only. Except, apparently, during their uh, stream this Friday, they said that they made a quote-unquote mistake and they gave out retail keys instead of the beta key. So anyone who got a key for free gets to keep the game. So hey, you get Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition for free. Gotta be got perfectly honest, Pedro's like, yo, uh, Pedro is really bad at explaining things. He's like, here's, here's the thing. And we had to spend five minutes reverse engineering. Look, what it, there, listen, were, mother, motherfucker, there were I'll instructions on that Discord. Hey, check out. He's got a mute button. Um, What went down is he, he threw it in our Discord. That I'm like, He's like, yeah, you just need to DM the bot. Like, what bot? He was like, well, in that particular channel, there's a bot. All right, your punishment's over. You can come back. <laughs> Okay, yeah. well, it's never Winter Nights Enhanced Edition. The big thing is, uh, it's my favorite, all-time favorite Linux game. And it's good to see that not only is it getting some more love, they're fixing old bugs, and they're trying their damnedest to make sure everything is backwards compatible. So, as far as I'm concerned, the moment this is out, go buy it. Don't pre-order it, just when it's out, go buy it. Not my cup I, of chainsaw, I mean, man. The, the, that, that would be like the third time I bought it because I bought 
a CD copy of <laughs> Platinum Edition. I bought it on GOG yeah. when I lost the key to the Platinum Edition. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to wait for these guys to send us some keys. Beamdog's been good about that in the past. And Pedro, Pedro, yeah. bad, bad. No pre-ordering. <laughs> no pre-ordering. Bad. I'll tell you every game, and before. it's technically already out. So, yeah. Bad. 20 bad, years bad, in bad, the bad, making. Bad. We got this information straight from the um, cheetah's mouth from Feral Rise of the Tomb Raider is coming to Linux and also Mac OS. It's going to be using Metal on Mac, Vulkan on Linux. Kind of short on the details mm -hmm. because I'm going to be real with you. I woke up in the morning and we get our press emails from Feral and I had the one I opened is like, because oh, I, I was perfect form of human burrito and it's hard to break free of that sometimes when you're all nice and warm. And I just saw Feral Tomb Raider. It's like, all right, I'm up. I'm up, up, because it's like, I'm going to log in, get my copy, and I'm going to be playing Tomb Raider. It's like, uh-uh. And I read the email after I'd made some tea. It's like, it's coming out in spring. To which I replied, yes. okay, Google, <laughs> when is spring? Um, <laughs> yeah, apparently it's from, like, uh, March 20th to June 20-something. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, that's June, about June three months. Seconds. Yeah, I mean, it yeah. starts, spring starts technically <laughs> I, I, March I, I, I mean, I mean it, Pedro, most seasons are about three months. Mm -hmm. this might yeah, be, this might so be news we got you. about a three-month window on when it my, may, might come out. M moot, yeah. Moot, uh, what do we do know? <laughs> I mean, hey man, it's going to be a Vulcan-only title. It's also kind of mm -hmm. wicked late. I'm sorry. I'm, a little bit. Yeah, a little, a little bit on the late side. And I'm just going to say this, a uh, friendly pro tip from your loving neighborhood Uncle Vin is if you're going to be on the Reddit and you're going to be like screaming straight up, no talks, no box, which is fine. It's completely legit. Try not to forget that you and me, you know, uh, call me. Uh, we're friends on <laughs> Steam and you use the same screen name and I just like check your inventory and you've already bought the game. The three of you, I'm not going to blow you up publicly. That's just like, what? Don't, don't, don't do that. Um, hey, who turned out the lights again? Part, part two, yes. the sequel. <laughs> the turning, turning, whatever. This is the fall. You may remember back in 2014, we uh, threw some chairs at the original The Fall. And uh, I had some complaints, namely the fact that the game didn't seem to want to uh, grab the mouse while you were, you know, not paused. And um, the controls were a bit janky, especially if you were trying to play the game with a controller. I hope, I hope they really fix it with The Fall Part 2, Unbound. Uh, because I really like the, like the original one's atmosphere. Uh, okay, the flashlight being teeny tiny was a bit shit, but... Oh, fuck you, it, uh, you're letting them skate by, man, because it was like everything that you needed to find in that game. You had to, like, pixel yeah. perfect over it. No, no, because yeah. it's not a flashlight. It's a, la it's a laser pointer. You laser flashlight. <laughs> it's a space flashlight, man. It's the same fucking thing, all right? It, it, a splashlight. Wait, you. No. Ooh, giggity. For a futuristic flashlight, that was really, really bad. It gave you all sorts of friction burns. Let's not talk about it. But it is, uh, it's out. It's available for a Eurolytics box. So if you have a 13, 49 pounds, or I'm guessing around um, 1999 US, it's probably something you may want to pick up. Hmm. All right. Um, price to sell at sundown. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so, um, you may have heard, because Invisigun was all over the place, you may have heard about how, how people loved Invisigun and the concept of uh, not being able to see your enemy. It's not exactly news, we already had screen sheet before that. Screen cheat, not cheat. Uh, and this one takes a very similar approach, but instead of uh, being like Invisigun, it is um, where in Visigun, everyone is basically the same character, just different colors. Here, you actually have different characters with different, gu uh, different guns, weapons, whatever. And you are only visible when you're attacking or in a light somewhere. That's kind of the, uh, the point of the game. You stay in the shadows and no one sees you. So 
Maybe this could be a fun uh, after show baby type of game. I downloaded it. I uh, saw the mechanics, and yeah, it's. Uh, I'm with you. It's either wicked gimmicky or it's kind of fun. Mm-hmm. The game looks better than you think because I was like, oh, it's another top down thing. But w- once you get on it, it, it it's actually very nicely cell shaded characters. Like, you guys need mm-hmm. to sh- like put that camera more up in the face so people can take a look at it. Jordan, did you uh, peruse it? I, I I looked through it. I didn't actually get a chance to play the demo at all, but there is one available. It's free, so that's, mm-hmm. that's a free thing. But yeah, no, it kind of reminded me of like Screen Sheet, right? Where you can only see people when they're uh, att- when they attack or dash. I don't I don't I don't know. It could, it could be a fun little party game. Maybe, maybe maybe something to do for the after show when it gets released in spring 2018, alongside Rise of the Tomb Raider, <laughs> at the exact same time. Hey man, but I. I I, I gotta go to prison by then, though. So, Tot, totes not GTA. Um, yeah, right. tr- 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 we're trying totes to build, not a, build PUBG. A yes. <laughs> well, no, it's not. It's not PUBG because there's a fucking timer on this. Yeah, this is this is um, <laughs> prison, the game, or the prison game rather. And instead of avoiding shanks and getting pounded in the hole, instead you have to survive for about thirty six minutes in a prison city. Um, they, they they throw a little twist into the deathmatch too because uh, there are periodic events that will spawn a bunch of AI controlled enemies or drop some traps and supplies. Um, and the one the one interesting thing uh, is that one person randomly will be assigned a bounty, and if you go kill them, you get the, a lot of points for it. But if they survive, they also get a lot of points. Here's the problem, devs. Um, if game theory has you know taught us anything. The, the the former will just like ne- or the latter will never happen. No one will survive because the second people see the guy with the bounty, everyone's gonna fucking gun for him. It's mm-hmm. it is it is just the thing. It's the dominant strategy. So good good try, devs. It's a neat little twist to a deathmatch mechanic, but you didn't really think that one through. Uh, I don't know, man. I, my first thought is like, oh, you thought PUBG's bad being an Unreal Engine four. Wait until you try a half-hearted remake yeah. in i'm guessing <laughs> unity yeah it, 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 look, it looks a bit unity yeah it might be interesting it looks very janky. it could be interesting it's but it's like 24 bucks and it looks like it's still very early days and mm-hmm. yeah um yeah mm-hmm. maybe, maybe, you know what maybe a little time in the oven will make it a decent a little uh, deathmatch shooter but indeed you, 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 you never know all right. You uh, never know. And more. to put a bow, yeah, to put a bow on it. You know how there was when when VR started becoming a thing, there was that job simulator game, mm-hmm. and they're like, "Oh, yeah, it'll be mm-hmm. fun to like take a profession and make a game out of it." Someone had the bright fucking idea to try and make tech support a game. <laughs> 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 no, uh, listen, uh, it. it it, it is it is very much a romanticized version of tech support because I'm pretty sure most of the viewing audience here has worked to support job true, in some capacity. True, true. But in, if in, we're in, looking in at past. this, man, like right here, blackmail customers for personal gain. See, <laughs> I, and, and that's the thing. That's not what happens in tech support. I've never had to hack my way out of a problem. Okay, no, hack in, in the sense of I've had to write bullshit to get something done, mm-hmm. not hack and search terms of exploit and breach um yeah so the, I, here, here's my question though is does it come with uh, a coupon for hair plugs after you pull it out after working a tech support <laughs> job coming home and playing a game about being tech support i don't know man uh, you, come on you, you can rise above a simple tech support specialist i don't we don't know what it's coming it just says it's coming soon it's available for Linux, and I, i'm kind of with you on the I think I can speak for a lot of people in our audience. They're either currently doing tech support, have done tech support, or aspire for some weird reason to become tech support. Uh, Pedro, thoughts, hints? Yeah. <laughs> no, uh, yeah, I left in the uh, show notes a couple of uh, junkie. <laughs> couple of questions because I have basically the first and second line of uh, tech support. When it comes to health education, England, Sex uh, at least over here in the um, <laughs> uh, in the Cambridge area, um, but 
It, it was, uh, do you have that person that says the printer isn't working because they're not connected to the right network? Or the person that says they can't scan because instead of going to the actual scans folder where the files are, they just create a folder called scans in their desktop and they expect them to magically appear there? Because I've had that uh, twice. Oh, 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 Pedro, sweetie, how about explaining to septuagenarian women who work in like <laughs> tiny small towns how to set up putty and connect to an SFTP server? <laughs> try, try, try explaining. <laughs> <laughs> to these people <laughs> oh man listen I, I will give the game developers credit though this is an interesting new twist on the horror genre i did not see that <laughs> yes <laughs> all right come on. all right we're, 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 we're fucking done here coming up next there there, there there's some buyouts there's some cancellations and there's some people not buying things Ladies and gentlemen, we don't really have uh, driver news this week, but uh, we do have some more news, which we will get to after the whoring. So, Jordan, as our resident whore, whore ourselves out, please. Whore ourselves. Whatever you say, whatever you say, slut. Um, <laughs> and you, 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 you too can be the ultimate slut by uh, going to LinuxGameCast.com and clicking <laughs> that support button. Um, you just rub, rub oil all over our body with those Amazon affiliate links, New York affiliate links, what, what, whatever, whatever you got. We got an affiliate link to get you, so you can support us without spending any additional money. We got an Amazon wish list as well. Then we'll uh, we'll expand on that a little bit later. Um, and of course, we got the lovely, lovely Patreon, patreoncom slash gamecast where we have reorganized some goals because we want to get uh, we want to get Jill on the show. So uh, she's now nineteen mm-hmm. bucks away. So give us give us twenty bucks, and then also sign up for the Patreon and give us money. Yeah, I mean, I mean, it's it's pretty cheap. You could uh, a buck a month gets you quite a bit, um, or rather a buck a week, anyways, because you can't do sub whatever. It doesn't matter. Uh, ben made a studio tour thing. You can check that out if you're a Patreon. We got all sorts of good stuff like uh, Patreon exclusive streams. We got the pre pre super shows and oh man, lots of neat, uh, neat, yeah, nifty stuff. No, I, I was going to say, I absolutely did through, I think it's not like the official studio tour. It was, fuck, I've been saying I'm going to do this forever. I, I recorded this Thursday. Sorry, everyone, for getting that outlay. Totes, totes, potato quality. I just grabbed the Nexus to decide, all right, do this. Because every time I've been sitting down to, I, I start producing in my head and was like, wouldn't it be fun to do a joke there? And at the end of the tour, it always ends up with like a midget jumping out of a fucking cake or something like that. <laughs> So yeah, th- this is me with like no caffeine in me. It's like okay, here's the basic shit. Here's the layout. There'll be a more detailed one like that coming up. But yeah, beautiful. Also, also I think Horatio's on vacation. If you can spare four quarters a week, man, think about it. Uh, it'd be awesome. You get some cool shit in return. We really appreciate it. it keeps us loud, live, independent, and we love you hard for it. Um, hard. We, we we got some people we got to thank. We got we, we got do. Rinnaker. Uh, we 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 got, we got Nighthawk. We are in. Well, <laughs> Rinnaker, Rinnaker is the new Patreon. We got we got some gear, didn't we? Oh shit, son! Yes, we do. Uh, one of the beautiful things is Frank. He always shows up on Saturdays, and he's got his fine upstanding can- cannibal wall. And there is a super awesome person, Michael G, who needs like multiple multiple ads to his name, but <laughs> it's in the credits. He picked us up the uh, Netgear. Check this business Ooh. out. It, it it has the dual core processor and extreme speed and re- basically what I'm saying. If the show fucks up tonight, throw him under the bus, man. Um, <laughs> no, this is a piece of kit to add with a modem that we are still waiting on because some dumbass forgot to order it under the Amazon Prime account. Me and uh, that's the thing. But one thing you do get to do is uh, send us a little card and we're going to read that live on the air which we're going to do it is um what is it hi linux game cast um hopefully this arrives in time for saturday <laughs> totes it and uh night train wreck keep up the good work hugs and kisses mick lg mm. also mm. it's so sexy what um, the taco flavor with kisses and also Last but not least, I don't really have an image of this because I immediately put it in, was uh, something... See see if you can guess who this is, Pedro and Jordan. Hi, then. Please adopt me. That should give it away. Also, I hope my small contribution will be helping helpings you very bigly. 
<laughs> yeah. Well, I, I, I mean, I, I, I'm, I'm looking at the show notes. So I, I know who the fuck that is. He's, he's, he's yeah, I know who it is. Though. And there's a there's a definite lack of uh, docking mm-hmm. possibilities in that particular note. So yeah. yeah I like. <laughs> I, I, Steve, I mean, the, Steve the, got the, it. Joe got it. Yeah. That, that, yeah as soon as you hear the, adoption, the, that that's always a good way. The, the, I got a big the, stack the maximum of these. Control, though. I love these. These are awesome. Thanks everyone who picks this up. It's like fucking cheat mode. It's like the game GD. For helping us stick this uh exciting things around there like power supplies and stuff but eventually one of our patreon goals is to do a beta site before we move to kansas and build a log cabin and have a throwdown for a month and end up destroying ourselves and the show and everything else mm-hmm. but and kansas i want to put like a wall together with all this shit because i'm a sentimental and fuck all okay beautiful people let's talk about publishers buying publishers hot publisher publisher on publisher action yes it's a publisher reception so thq nordic you well we've actually thrown chairs at quite a few of their games on the Linuxes, and they're buying up saints row and metro now um remains to be seen uh if they're going to be buying the rest of 4a games or is it well the, so the, the, yeah mm-hmm. a court so according to the uh story uh this is from Rock Paper Shotgun. Links to all this in our mm-hmm. show notes. They actually bought out uh, Cock Media. Coke gonna, Media? Yeah. What, 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 Cock Media. Ben, ben Banks is just <laughs> Cock Media. Um, <laughs> but yeah. Um, so they're, 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 trying to, uh, they're trying to consolidate, I guess, all of the old THQ properties after they went under from that miserable Wii experiment that they did a couple mm-hmm. of years back. Uh, hopefully, though, um, and this is, this is pure speculation, pure hoping against hope against hope against hope that uh, we're going to start seeing them being less reliant on uh, virtual programming. Also, possibly new Metro on Linux, question mark? Also, yes, reading through this article... Very good. Also, also, I was reading through this article on, on, on the train home today, mm-hmm. and I'm like, and I, I noticed something weird. I'm like, who the fuck wrote this article? Pedro? There's so much useless filler in here. <laughs> so much. So much. So, yeah, they're actually buying uh, cock, coke, whatever you want to call them. Uh, cock uh who are the parent company of uh deep silver so everything deep silver owns right now and all the other development studios and everything else that they have thq nordic is gobbling them up maybe now we will see that uh i don't know i was going to see maybe we'll see proper saints row ports but yeah that's not likely to happen no the, 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 it, it, it's, it's a it's a pipe dream to expect them to like win yeah ports. <laughs> So good news, everyone. Uh, System Shock is uh, okay. I'm I'm lying. Not good news because sometimes you need to take a step back in order to take two steps forward. Kickstarter update from Stephen Kick, not Stephen Cock, CEO of Night Dive Studios. <laughs> he basically runs down. He's like, "Yo, man, the scope changed. We originally wanted to make you know just a remake of System Shock. We switched engines. We don't regret it. Some things have happened, and um." He takes full responsibility. Responsibility of what other than? Well, he's had to put the team on hiatus as they reassess their path so they can return to their visions. Now, a patented piece of technology that we've invented at LGC Weekly is a device we like to call the D Bullshitotron 9000, where you can take corporate speak or PR speak like this, run it through, and it'll translate it into actual words for your brain organ. And, you know, I, I kind of fed it in. What it spit out was something roughly along them, kind of paraphrasing, was, you know, what, what they're saying is, hey, man, we, we've been shopping around the game that we've been working on, the system shock that has, <laughs> you know, went beyond its original scope and what we started the Kickstarter project for. We maybe want some publishers, and they've been knocking on doors. Nobody's been opening those doors. And, uh, yeah, P.S., by the way, we've kind of already burnt through all of our Kickstarter money, so maybe we're tapping the brakes on, uh, yeah, we're out of money. Uh, does, does, does that seem, seem, seem about right? Yeah, it seems yep. about right. And it's just more proof that you shouldn't be giving money to video games on Kickstarter, because I like the idea of a uh, System Shock remaster remake in a modern day engine and they started going a little bit uh, feature crazy mm. so yeah yeah 
Well, and, and, and that's the thing. At the end, they have like the, please accept my personal assurance that we'll be back and stronger than ever. Yeah, famous last words. Because Oh, this, man, this yeah. Is a story, th- th- this, is, this is a story about how scope creep uh, will kill your project. Because here's the thing. I think Kickstarter is a great tool for developing video games. I think it enables smaller publishers and developers to have a chance to actually produce something. Mm-hmm. That said, developers sort of are not managers. They're not project managers. Mm. They need to understand that when you're operating under a limited budget, you, it's really important that you set realistic and manageable goals that you can achieve. Just because your Kickstarter went gangbusters doesn't mean that you can just go willy nilly and say, oh, we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. And we're going to do this. You made a progress, promise to people. People gave you money. Accomplish what you set out to do and then work on improving it. If you have aspirations for bigger goals, make your base a more modular, make it more robust and extendable. Mm -hmm. And that way, when it comes time to implement all these crazy new things that you want to do, the lion's share of the work has already been done. This is very true, man. Um, I think it's more like system stop now instead of system shock. But every project needs a project manager. You need an old man, Vin, somebody to answer to. And that is going to be like, no, like, like, hey, man, I want to do this feature in this feature. You need somebody to go, we can't fucking afford that. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You, 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 you need, you need people to say, no, we have a goal. I'm going to ride your ass until Mm -hmm. we finish this goal. Yeah. Like I keep saying project management is not for punk ass bitches. I do not envy managers. They essentially get shit on constantly, but they are trying to do a job. Somebody's got to be the bad guy, man. I mean, yeah, period. At the end of the day. Um, so Shams, man, uh, from Paradox, he, he's got some advice for uh, Linux gamers. Yes. Spend more money. Advice. Yeah, it's kind of like the chi- <laughs> it's chicken and chainsaw. So it's a little uh, on the Twitters, man. He's like, yo, man, he, he was talking about uh, an episode of a show they do. Uh, it was from season one, episode two. And he, he says, uh, who is he by day? Corporate paladin uh, at Paradox Interactive. He looks for new and weird game businesses by night. He's totes not a vampire. Uh, I'll confirm that. Uh, so what does he say? He says, sadly, Linux is less than a percent of sales and keeps dwindling. Steam Austin didn't turn out to be what we all hoped. True, true. But this is what I wanted to touch on. The Linux community needs to grow or spend more to stay viable. So I, I just retweeted this with a little little comment um because this is kind of an interesting bit of logic here he's saying linux users need to buy more games followed by me going let's release some more games uh then the gaming industry going well not until linux users buy more games tide goes in (laughs) tide goes out tide pods are delicious Yeah, it's it's the stupid chicken and egg thing. And here and here's the thing. Yes, Linux users are not necessarily the most profitable market segment, but at the same time, people we're willing to pay. If you if, look mm-hmm. at look at humble stats, look at Steam, um, Linux users are more willing to pay the iron the the gold price, not the iron price, because mm-hmm. it involves killing the developers <laughs> taking their code, but the gold price. <laughs> For the games, and they'll they'll usually buy them at full price. They'll if they have a pay what you want model, they'll usually end up paying more. There's only so much we can do, right? We're not going to keep buying the same game over and over again. It's unreasonable to expect that. And yes, it's a little bit on us because we need to foster more and a larger Linux user base. And distribu- distributions need to work on making Linux a lot more accessible to normies. Uh, we got decades of fud we need to cut through, but. Trotting this old stale argument out doesn't really help anything. Steam for Linux exists. GOG for Linux exists. Itch.io has Linux games. Game Jam say, hey, you should make a cross platform. Mm-hmm. We have so many tools now to make building and supporting Linux games trivial that you, if you just make a little bit of investment, that, that, that seed will grow and blossom into a muddy tree. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the big thing is uh it really is the game's argument okay are new games coming out on linux at the same time that they are on windows mostly not so linux users feel less inclined to buy that game when it is first out obviously well Pedro, uh, our, think about it i mean if you're like just linux curious 
You're not going to get that yeah. if the Linux version comes out a year later. Hashtag Tomb Raider. Mm-hmm. Um, you've already bought it, man. So yep, you, you come and rolling out the with thing. your Linux version. You can't expect all the mad sales. With if uh, a hypothetical scenario, if more AAA publishers and AAA developers put out their games on Linux, I have no doubt in my mind that more people would start to use Linux. Because, hey, you, all of a sudden you don't have to deal with Windows or Microsoft bullshit anymore. And the game is on Linux. It's also on Windows, so the people who are stuck to that Microsoft mentality can stay there. But a lot of people are actually very angry at Microsoft. So if the games start coming out on Linux, more people will start to use Linux. And to, Jordan's, just, I, uh, you, to Jordan's point, you really got to go out of your way to uh, have an engine that... I mean, all the tools. I mean, you have Unity, you have Unreal, supposedly Lumberyard, and to a lesser extent, Crytek, and... Good, good dough. Good dough. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. It's a thing. Anyway, uh, the not the life of pie, but the life of ports, as in wine, has oh. a house. The life of Aspire. So, the, this is from Eurogamer.net. It's a very Mac-focused article, but there's still some insight to be gleaned. Uh, they have a little... Little Q and A with uh, the folks at Aspire. Uh, get a little bit of their history. They started in '96. Uh, took a big risk. Blah blah blah. Uh, they they sort of smashed through their competitions by you know putting out decent performing ports, <laughs> virtual programming. Mm-hmm. Oh, interestingly <laughs> enough, uh, apparently according to this article, virtual programming seems to be fading away like uh, something out of fucking Quantum Leap or something like that. <laughs> because uh, uh, no no new announcements. They're the, apparently their website just seems to indicate that they're. Um, they're sort of moving to a support only model. And uh, I can only Jordan, hope against hope. Jordan, <laughs> uh, that, you know, uh, that, that, that rhymes with DX11 support and wine. Mm hmm. Yeah. Oh, look, mm-hmm. wine all of a I, sudden actually has pretty good DX11 support. Huh. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, <laughs> it's kind but, of your business and, and, model. And, and, and that, that, that's, what, that's what makes me smile on the inside because maybe, maybe there is some hope for the THQ Nordic uh, stuff after all. Maybe it's the light at the end of the VP tunnel. Anyways, um, so it's a little more discussion. You can read it. There's not much here other than apparently Aspire only has about 12 actual developers on staff, which mm-hmm. seems a little small. Um, may also explain Although, the reduced output on the Linux space. Um. Uh, who was it in Discord that brought up uh, Arthur? And uh, that's an article from 2014. So we may be working off of outdated information here. <laughs> this this is also oh yeah damn. Well, so yeah. much for that. Virtual programming is the future. I for one welcome our new Eon overlords. Bow down, bow down. <laughs> Amen. Shroud of the Avatar has left early access or is leaving early access on March 27th. Is leaving early access, yes. Hey, uh, wait so... a minute. Th- this article is from 1776. No, this article is from uh, February 15th. Why do you hate freedom, Pedro? Yes. Uh, <laughs> I hate Cause, everything, cause so British. the freedom's just one more thing. But it is Shroud of the Avatar. It's uh, Richard Garriott's MMO, and there the game as it stands, it works, quote unquote. It works in the technical sense. It doesn't really work in the successful sense because uh, it's been shedding players like crazy, uh, and right now it's um, sti- uh, sitting at around 140. Average concurrent players over the past 30 days, according to Steam charts. So that doesn't really spell a very good future for what is to be uh, the Linux MMO that isn't uh, Champions of Regnum. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I looked at this and was like, wait a minute, this is Linux support? Then I looked further into it and I was like, yeah, you can keep Linux support. Um, ha- have fun with that, guys. No. <laughs> Yeah, the, the the game is totally not big. They say it'll come out of early access on March 27th, uh, even though it's been in development for ages. So we're, we're, we're talking barren. like Rust leaving early access, early access, right? Uh, no, because Rust leaving early access, I have no doubts that uh, Gary Newman and the rest of Face Punch will actually keep on trying to develop it. Maybe not so much on the Linux, but they will keep trying to do something with it. Um what I don't see is Richard Garriott and the rest of the team behind Shroud of the Avatar doing anything that will change the basic spiral of oblivion, doom, 
whatever you want to call let's, it, let's, that let's, this game listen, is heading listen. down. First, first off, first off, his name is General British, you Philistine. <laughs> second, second, second of all, um, I, so I, I, I talk to Sandy really regularly because we uh, we uh, play a lot of video games on Thursdays. You should check that out. We're doing Divinity mm-hmm. the Original Sin. Just, just a little plug for our streams. Um, but uh, he was. He, we were we were talking about Shadow of the Avatar because he was sinking some fucking time into that one, and mm-hmm. a lot of the, what it, what a lot of what he was getting at is like there's not a lot of material for the single player game for the single player experience. And this article goes on and says that um a lot of the uh sing, single player stuff is not necessarily single player. It's not really soloable. And the, the thing with Shadow of the Avatar was that it was always a really ambitious project. It was like this is the the Ultima dream. This is what. Richard Garriott's true vision of what Ultima could have been is. And I I, I, I don't know, like the long development time didn't surprise me. The fact that it's not going to be complete on release does not surprise me at all. I'm just, I'm sad because like, I I love, I'm in love with the idea of this game, but its execution is just going to be so miserable. Do you know what has surprised me though? What what, what was that, sweetie? That I I think we're going to get out of this new segment in under 30 minutes. Oh <laughs> well, my god! Well, we only god. have the five stories, so <laughs> yeah, those are the longest five stories I've ever read. Coming up next, we go get tangled up in a mess of cables, deep, deep, deep behind Ben's desk. Oh god, there's this horrible mess of tangled crap I need to undo. I think I've gotten myself a little in too deep. Speaking of Tangle Deep, we're throwing chairs at it. Tangle Deep. It's by Impact Gameworks, developed on the Unity engine. Uh, according to its description, enter a magical world of Tangle Deep, a beautifully polished dungeon crawler inspired by classical 16-bit RPGs. Colorful characters, a unique job system, tons of skills, items, and diverse environments with deep, turn-based roguelike gameplay. A different adventure every time you play. Kind of like how Rogue works. This is the Share QA edition. This is where we take a look at a game. Sometimes they send it to us. In this case, uh, Impact Game Works sent us some peas. Thanks a lot for that. Peas or uh, keys? And we... Yes. Okay. They sent us. They sent us like a bunch of frozen peas. Green penis. Or it's country goodness and <laughs> green penis. <laughs> um, wait, that's, I'm not. I'm not reading that. I quit. No. Um... <laughs> So, uh, this is Share QA Edition. This is where uh, we take a look at some games. Uh, we play them a little bit. We maybe do a little bit of QA that the developers did not do before they released it. Then we tell you our final thoughts. We rate it on the chair scale. One chair means that's garbage. Two chairs means meh. Three chairs means it's pretty good. And four chairs means that it is amaze balls. And we got our categories of doom mixed with the working shiny sounds, controls, and fun. So, without further ado, then. Did Tangle Deep make with the working? On hey man, Ubuntu. Um, Kombu 1710 Ryzen 1700 now clocked at as he scrolls up to the top 3.7 gigajoules. BIOS update, memory running at 3200. That that's a new that's a new thing. Um, yeah man, it the game works. It launches, it runs, but you know what? I saw something I haven't seen in a long time, motherfuckers. <laughs> that's the Unity scream of nope. Boom. All right. Sorry. New rule. 2018. Definitely enforcing it. If I see that bullshit in 2018 in your video game, automatic minus two chairs on that shit. So yeah, your game technically works, but unfuck yourself, son. Two chairs. Now, I, I, I got a question about that. Does that mean in 2019, minus three chairs for Unity Screaming Up? That seems like a reasonable thing. <laughs> it does now. It's exponential <laughs> okay. chairs. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. But yeah, no, fuck that launcher is jank. It doesn't even remember your goddamn resolution settings, which is really annoying. And your graphical options are no V-Sync, V-Sync, or alternative V-Sync. Right. Which I guess is what, which, which is, I guess, <laughs> whatever uh, v- that means. <laughs> v- V-Sync as implemented by 4chan. Who knows? Uh, yeah, on Fedora 26, 64 bit with the i7 6700K, GTX 980, 32 gigs of RAM, bunch of solid state drives. Everything works. It doesn't run badly. I mean, it can't run badly. Look at it. <laughs> Two chairs. <laughs> yeah, I know. The, the launcher, for me anyway, remembered the uh, settings I changed. I set it to, uh, it defaults to 720p windowed, and I changed it to 1080p full screen, and it remembered it. So, yeah. But, uh, yeah, that uh, Unity scream of nope is completely useless. There's 
no reason these couldn't be in-game settings. The in-game settings are even have like the frame rate cap thing. So even the V-Sync bullshit could very well be in-game. Two chairs. Boom. Yeah, so that, 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 that's used your chairs for mixed with working. How about the shiny and sounds? So I, I'll, I'll, I'll take the lead on this. Because, you know, Final Fantasy was released in 1987. And computer graphics have mm -hmm. moved on since then. And let's be real. Tw playing this on a 28-inch UHD monitor does not do this game any favors <laughs> at any resolution higher than, like, 1024 by 768. <laughs> um, I mean, like, the the, 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 the sprites are all well-defined and whatnot, but it's not anything special. Again, it looks like something out of Final Fantasy 2 or 3 or 4. Not 5, though. Um... And the sound design is kind of meh because it's like some Nobuo Uimetsu esque noodling on on the piano. It's it's kind it's tame. It doesn't have any particular flavor to it. It's just kind of there. So it gets the mess score of dos for me. Yeah, man, this thing looks like a JRPG if it had like a learning disorder. Um, <laughs> I'm not not to say it's poorly done, but yeah, it's amateur hour pixelated meh. That's what it is. Plus. What is wrong with your face? Uh, my main character is like all drop trodden. It's just fucked up looking. It's like if I woke up in the middle of the night, saw that shit. Uh uh. Old dead Vin, man. I a drop over of a raging, raging erection. Um, I don't know if it's got sounds or not. I didn't bother to cut them on because I was too busy trying to play the fucking game, trying to make myself get interested in it. And uh, yeah, this is a kaleidoscope of nope for me, but I'll talk more about that in the fun section. I don't give you two chairs, because technically, that's what you get in the QA, man. You put shit on the screen, and it makes beeps and boops, but that's all. Yeah, it does let you disable VSync, uh, but it, uh, like I mentioned earlier, it does have the uh, FERPS cap option in the options menu, which is nice, because VSync tends to not work so well, especially with Unity on Linux, and so if you just can cap the, uh, the FERPS to 60, it stops certain video cards, like mine, from uh, going all coal, coil whiny and shit. Because this 1080, and this is a known problem with the Gigabyte G1 series, um, they have a lot of coil whine. Uh, so that's something I appreciated myself. Uh, the graphics are kind of meh. The music borrows heavily from other dungeon crawler, roguelike type games, but it works, I guess. If I had to come up with an example of a game that has some charm to it, even though its presentation isn't really great, I guess Tangle Deep would fit. I would give it three chairs, but it doesn't really matter because it's going to average out to two. <laughs> it will, and leave it to Pedro to complain about the free 1080 that he got. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> I didn't complain, I just say that it's a known you, issue. No, okay? you, 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 you're straight, straight, straight up complaining, <laughs> Mr. Titso Bitch. That's two chairs for shining the sounds. How about controls? So, Mr. Titso Bitch, continue on with your little tirade. It's roguelike. I don't know how you guys play roguelikes, judging by your uh, things in the notes there, but for me, it's a one-handed game. I even went to the Rocat settings, set all of the uh, key bindings to um, the extra mouse buttons what I have, and it, it's completely a one-handed game. If you want to switch hands at one point, you can just use keyboard then, and it works just as well. Uh, I... I honestly don't have an issue with this game. It's a roguelike. It's four chairs, as far as I'm concerned. Uh, like, uh, Ben, you want to... Uh... Sure, girlfriend. Um, <laughs> this thing controls like poo. It does. <laughs> yeah, it's... A, to Pedro's argument, Pedro would say, but Vin, it's supposed to control like poo. It's like, maybe that's not a good game mechanic, then. Even with the gerbil <laughs> and a keyboard... Yep, poo all over the place trying to control it because it's supposed to control like that, Vin. You don't know what you're talking about. And with something like this, yeah, like Jordan, I'm with you, man. You kind of get the vibes like maybe late NES, early SNES days. So it makes you pick up things like, I don't know, a fucking controller. This thing is absolutely tits hopeless with a Steam controller. That I've never tapped out of trying to configure something with a Steam controller until Tangle Deep. I did. 
listen, you can fight this thing. You can make it work. Hell, this game's like, this is how you move diagonally. If a fucking game's got to tell me how I got to move fucking diagonally, yeah, there might be a goddamn issue or two. So, <laughs> speaking of two, that's how many chairs it gets. Yeah, so... Remember what I mentioned earlier on in the Steam segment, how there's some issues with games not working with the paired DualShock controller? This is one of them, and I'm fucking <laughs> sick of it, so you're going to lose two chairs off the bat just for that at, from now on. I'm done. No, no more free passes. Um, I'm also not a fan of like mapping the mapping of the Q, E, Z, and C keys, because they should do diagonal movement. Um, I shouldn't have to switch to the numpad. Because if the the numpad will do dyna- diagonal movement with seven nine one and three, which is which is nice if you're doing the numpad thing. But I default to was because I am a righty, even though my left hand was shut up. Um, dire- directional keys go 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 in the left hand. That the 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 point I'm getting at. Any anywho, um, yeah. Every every uh, beyond that, everything controls relatively fine. You either click or you you point in the direction and you move, and the other guys move. And sometimes you use an ability and so on and so forth. Yeah, so I mean, I'll give it I'll give it two chairs just because you gotta start working with that pair of dual shot controller, Brad. It's a supported controller. Two chairs. Under Steam. <laughs> no two chairs. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just so so mad. So let's put a bow on it. Ben, did you have fun? Last but not least, man. Fuck this game. I tried. I got almost two hours in this. I don't know. Did, did you guys get any it wasn't shitting out achievements. I'll give it that. It's got that going for it. Um, I got four. Okay, I think I got, I got one. I got, I got two. two. Um, this is kind of turn-based. Nope, not really. I don't know because you can just hold down and keep attacking things, dying. You go into menus. When I move, you move. And yeah, that, that's another thing. That's like extra nope on your nope fucking sandwich right there. Uh, you go into menus, start looking at with just like it's just boom spreadsheet simulator. Not looking for that in a fucking video game. I'm just telling you, that's my preference, because this is the fun section where I get to talk about shit like that. Uh, <laughs> there's nothing in this game that could make me enjoy it. Hipster pixels, turn base, move when you move type shit like Pedro just threw down. It is really, I don't know. All this thing needs is a full motion video intro of like fucking Spice World, and it would be the worst <laughs> game ever made. Uh, what do we got on the price? Yeah, 14 dollars and I'm saying for me, some people might really dig this. I can tell this was made with love. This isn't fucking shovelware. Somebody had a vision, a cohesive like plan, stuck it together. And if this is your shit, go for it, man. And it's not crazy price. There's a ton of stuff to do in there. I'm just the wrong demographic. So, yeah, not peace among worlds. Just one chair. Fuck that. You know, you yeah, know this haven't... isn't too bad. Go ahead, Jordan. Uh, <laughs> all right. It's not too bad a game, is what I was saying. Um, you gotta, I mean, it, so th- it's NetHack, right? If you played NetHack, if you played Rogue, you know exactly what's going on. The whole move when you move thing is emblematic of the roguelike genre since literally fucking Rogue, the the, the original game yeah. that showed up on floppy disk. <laughs> uh, or tapes, even. It was a tape. That's right. It's that old. Uh, so you gotta you gotta plan ahead, and then you know shit appears from off screen and fucks you. It's fun because you get aoe'd. Um, but yeah, like I said, lots of inspiration from NetHack, lots of like visual inspiration from Final Fantasy. A lot of the jobs are inspired from that as well, and it's not a bad little combination. Though I will say that like the solid blue menu these days looks super crappy. Uh, all the class I played a couple of the classes. Um, they're all pretty interesting. They all have a fairly unique playstyle, all con- considering that you're still bound to that sort of forced movement. Uh, thing I actually I really like the the spellcaster the most just because you can zip around and teleport and blow shit up with like uh, spell templates it's good fun uh, but the, the when it boils down to it this is a game that I have played dozens of times I did not pay attention in class in college because I was too busy playing NetHack uh, <laughs> because I could play it in a terminal I wouldn't kill my battery um, and it, the the additions that this game brings to the table are merely adequate. They it's not anything particularly revolutionary. It's not something that goes, hmm, this is a mechanic that I really want to engage with. Oh, cooking, I really don't care. Um the the finding well, treasure that makes things well, harder. What if it was like breaking bad cooking? <laughs> do, 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 do I get actual meth at the end of it? I'm just saying it could be like a reward. <laughs> yeah, they just they just send you they just mail you some meth. Crafting. The, uh, yeah, craft. Yeah, we, we, we got to craft, Jesse. Uh, yeah, but 
what, what, what I'm getting at is it is an adequate game that does its job adequately, but it's not it's not enough to push it to three chairs. It still stays in the two realm. Pedro, now you get to talk. Yeah, uh, I haven't had this much fun with a game since we reviewed Hand of Fate 2. I love roguelikes. I suck at them. I make no excuses for myself, uh, but uh, I like roguelikes. I do. It, this is another one which isn't actually terrible, and it may even take the place of Dungeons of Dreadmore just because I have beat Dungeons of Dreadmore, so I'm looking for a new roguelike to get into and, you know, actually beat. This may very well be it. It takes some elements from other RPGs, like taming monsters, turning them into pets, uh, item dungeons like your Disgaea's, uh, class switching. Uh, it The only thing that class switching does is it switches your sprite. You get to keep your previously unlocked skills, but then you also get to unlock the new skills. So that's nice. Uh, it is hard like most roguelikes, and it will ki kill you given half a chance, but it has a bank system to store items. If you get, like, a really good item, and um, you want to, say, I don't know, maybe feed up your new character to actually progress through the dungeon a bit faster, and, yeah, I guess I really enjoyed my time with this game, because I... I don't know. It, I like roguelikes. It... Uh, it Granted, it has Ipsir pixel graphics and rather samey environments, and the music's a bit elevatory, but I liked it. I'd give it three chairs, but apparently I don't count on this one. <laughs> you really, you don't count, period, Pedro. All right, well, that, that is three chairs for Pedro. That's two chairs for us. Wrap it all up, put a little bow on it. It's two chairs for Tangle Deep. It's all right. It's a bit of okay sauce. If you like roguelikes, if you like that hack, and you're not entirely tired of it, might be uh, might be something you want to check out. Maybe wait for it to go on sale. Don't pay the uh, fifteen dollar full price. Do you guys have any closing closing thoughts before we get out here? Uh, it's a well done game for people that like that, and for people that's not. I always it, one of the things I do enjoy is taking the fucking Pepsi challenge with stuff like this because you never know this could be that game. And no, no, if you don't like turn based anything like that. You don't really like dungeon crawlers. You're not a huge fan of roguelikes. Uh, this is not going to change your mind. Not the game's fault, but hey, man, is what it is. Take us the fuck out of here. All right. Yeah, all right. Well, with that all said and done, coming up next, it's a little chilly. My nipples are like pencil erasers. We will discuss in the hate mail segment. All the leaves are brown. And it looks like we need to wrap up this show. It went a bit long, we know, but uh, you lot seem to enjoy long shows. <laughs> or if you don't, you know, you could actually let us know by going to LinuxGameCast.com. You hit the contact button, you fill out the form. It's pretty easy. Make sure LGT Weekly is the thing that you pick on a little drop downy thing. Just do the capture and... Uh, Bob's your uncle. We will feature your uh, suggestions, hate mail... Hints, thoughts, allegations, things better left than said. We've said that a lot, but whatever. Uh, we will be happy to feature it right here, right now. Uh, if you are a game developer, though, make sure to send us three keys or a build that we can share amongst all of us. Because if you don't, we will just make fun of you. And trust me when I say you don't want that. Sometimes, no, sometimes uh, I, I, I politely decline because people still send them to us through our Steam <laughs> page and mm -hmm. it's like you can't read that, that that's i i need to make a um like grease monkey script that changes that to i didn't read <laughs> seems, seems, seems legit so our, our our one bit of our one bit of hate mail today is entitled pedro is a cold bitch sometimes from our lovely <laughs> french the, the, the our best french audience member the Sildat. And he says, wow, Pedro, talk about being cold here. Okay, Power Rumi has a very arcade structure, going as far as saying that the title is not a game changer. Well, I beg to differ. Those guys, when they started creating the game, wanted to create a game that would scratch a puzzle shooter itch for shmup fans who appreciate titles like Ikaru or Ikaruga. Ikaruga. Or the overly difficult yeah. bullet hell. 
Ikaruga. I, I, I always I end up switching between I- Ikaruga and I- I- Ikar- <laughs> I- 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 whatever. <laughs> uh, sure, sure. The game is about beat your score, but figuring out the scoring mechanic is what puzzle shooters are all about. So in short, oh geez, the their goal was Ikaruga, except better, way more balanced difficulty wise. That has a Mac Austin Linux version, contrary to the aforementioned venerable ancestor and inspiration. Now, and I would now. dare say, now, oh, oh go ahead, go ahead, now. go ahead, go. Uh, and I would dare say that the front they delivered the goods, man. Heart the soldier. You added way now. more commas than there were. Here's here's the thing. Uh, in short. Legit compared to Pedro's fucking War and Peace novels that he comes up with. <laughs> Seems legit. <laughs> Come on, at true, least true I fact. have some commas. Admittedly, uh, according to Jordan, I comma splice a little bit, but come on, man. <laughs> uh, 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 a little bit, sweetheart. If uh, if you look up comma splice in the dictionary, inexplicably there's a picture I of Pedro. I swear to fuck, man, if you added one more comma, you'd become a chameleon. Dude, seriously. <laughs> comma you're chameleon, gonna put, yes. You're, uh, <laughs> you're, you're going to put me in a comma coma, man. So here's the thing, Sildat. I don't see you actually questioning any of the factual criticisms I leveled at the game. Criticisms? Uh, what? Criticisms? Criticisms, yes. I may have been drinking a little bit. Sue me. Uh, don't sue me. That wouldn't actually be nice. But, uh, yeah, uh, all you had to, uh, raise an issue with was that it didn't change the game. Well, I'm sorry. It is a shmup. That's all it is. It doesn't really do anything to change my opinion regarding shmups. There was one shmup I really, really enjoyed back in the 90s. It was called Demon Star. Look it up. Maybe even play it a little bit. I hear it's free now. So, yeah. I'm sorry. I just can't share the same... Um, I don't know. What you would even call... Uh, whatever it is you did there. Uh, still that, I love you. I do. Uh, but uh, that's... You're literally arguing the subjective bit of the review what we did last week. I'm it's, waiting for the lightning. Yeah. <laughs> Listen, all, all, all I'm hearing is you need to stop being such a cold bitch, Pedro. Cold, <laughs> cold. I'm not bitch. a cold bitch. <laughs> You're as cold as ice. As ice. <laughs> And In on fact, that bombshell, ta- ladies and gentlemen, let's cue the music because he will fucking keep get- going on for another <laughs> half hour. Tap the brakes on that. Um, you can always find us around 930 Eastern Standard Moon Time. I think we're going to get an early show and maybe not next week, but the week after that, if the schedules and fucking stars align, we rarely get to do those, but we do enjoy it when we can. I'm Vin Stone at Vin Stone on Twitter. Vin Stone, type it into Google. You'll find me. Unfortunately, it's a thing. I'm Jordan Svung. I'm willing to sacrifice our love. I never take advice, and I'm going to pay the price. And you can find me at the Burning Cool on Twitter, plus Jordan Svung on Google+. And just like that, I'm not a lovable person by any means or measure. But uh, if you want to argue on the internet, I'm your bitch. Quite literally. I am Pedro Mateos. You can find me at Unaccounted4 on Twitter, or plus Pedro Mateos on Google+. He's like a dog, man, chasing a car. <laughs> if he fucking caught the car, he wouldn't know what to do with it, man. <laughs> just, 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 all right, let's just play some credits. Yeah. Oh, and and and, uh, and uh, Ter- Terry showed up right at the end. Hey, hey, man, that's that's somebody who knows how to play the game. He's like, oof, all right, that's over. <laughs> Hey, let's look at all our executive producers, our Patreons, the people who make this show possible. You need to thank them because they're awesome. Also, also got to thank George Lucas for popularizing that credit format. I'm telling you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Almost makes up for the Star Wars holiday special. Drugs, we quite. didn't learn a damn thing. Uh, well, well, we learned uh, stuff that we can't repeat. Yeah, no, YouTube doesn't really like us when we say those things out loud. Yeah, often. You, you, YouTube don't like nobody these days, man. <laughs> I used to think we were special. We're not. <laughs> no, YouTube is just anthropy defined and also run by Puritans. Yeah, it's, uh, no, um, this is weird kind of Puritans. Oh, pu- wait, no, pu- they are Puritans. They're Puritans are not incompetent. <laughs> so don't, don't insult Puritans like that again. Listen, it's a Puritan artificial intelligence. Somehow they've created machine intelligence 
and all of a sudden it's Christian. Uh, Die of fire. We love you. <laughs> Bye-bye. Five dudes. <laughs>